Hey, this is Knots here, and we're in the Tier 10 British Destroyer Daring on the map Warrior's Path. I'm going to talk about British DD design, and of course the Daring is the primary discussion topic. But we're going to use, you know, other British DDs as examples and discuss it further. So the Daring, Tier 10 British DD. Obviously it's a culmination of a lot of time invested by the player, eventually whenever they come into the game. And its basic traits are 114 millimeter guns, single launch torpedo systems. It has incredible concealment if you spec into it. It has the ability to equip hydroacoustic, which is fairly rare for DDs. Obviously the Germans and a couple premiums have access to it, but so far it's been limited to just Germans and Germans have it on their battleships and their cruisers. It would make sense that only the Germans would ever have it, but clearly the British get it too. Now, the British hydroacoustic is not German. It does not excel at anything except for duration. It's got a super shallow detection for ships and torpedoes. It's so bad, I think a tier six or tier seven, whichever tier that is that you get hydro for the first time, you can outspot the base torpedo spotting range by like 200 meters. Base surface detection is, you know, around the same. It's really bad. Like, oh boy, 200 meters. You're just giving me everything, right? Wargaming, don't hold back. You're being way too generous with your gifts. Clearly, it's less than desirable because it's barely beneficial. And it's the only option. You don't get anything else. In fact, you used to be able to equip Speed Boost before it came out to the CC, so Wargaming would say, well, technically, you never knew that version, so there's no complaints. Oh, I'm going to complain, because Hydro's bad. I would rather have Speed Boost than this piece of garbage. I'm sorry. It's just so shallow. It, And I know I could have had Speed Boost if that choice would have stayed in the game. And I remember talking about, well, I'm going to equip Speed Boost because this Hydro's bad. And maybe that sort of commentary from a lot of different people is why they took it out. Because they didn't want the British DDs to take Speed Boost. Well, guess what? They don't get Speed Boost. And they get rushed down so quick. You think the radar meta sucks for a gearing? Or a Z-52? Or a Shimakaze? Oh, it sucks. When you go 35 knots, max speed, and you don't get to use Speed Boost. Plus, you've got to basically engage within 10 kilometers of your ship because the gun velocity in the arc, it's incredibly high. It, it takes forever for the shell to drop. So every kilometer that's added to it, it just further complicates the whole situation. On top of all of that, this gun caliber baseline cannot penetrate basic destroyer armor. 19 millimeters is just too thick for the 114s that are equipped to the Daring and the Tier 9. I'm sorry, I don't remember all the names right now. I'm just talking freely. So you've got to invest in Inertia Fuse High Explosive in order to do anything. Now, maybe when these come out, that armor adjustment to all of the DDs will come into effect. Well, and then it'll be irrelevant. This whole commentary it would be irrelevant if that were the case. I haven't seen anything to verify that that is indeed their plan, but I don't know that they would say that because it would lock down a more specific release schedule than what they probably want public, right? But it would fit within reason that they don't want to confirm or deny any of that. But right now, the four 114 millimeter guns, they, they can't pin DD basic armor. You have to invest in an Urshifu's high explosive. The one good thing, though, about this particular ship line is that they are so well concealed, you don't actually need concealment skill. You get to 6-1, which is not pleasant, I must say. 
considering you can ru get rushed down and yeah, you can't do anything. But you don't need concealment. You need concealment on other ships, other DD lines. Concealment is very good. It's clearly very good. And the only reason you would choose inertia fuse over concealment is because you have to. That's the only choice you can make. And I disagree with that design. I think that's a terrible design when you're locking a player into choosing. Akizuki just went through this. I would hope that the armor change comes in before these guys are released. So Inertia Fuse High Explosive isn't a mandatory skill. That's my opinion. Some CCs disagree. Some regular players disagree. But I just think that making a line clunkier by forcing a skill to be taken just to play with it. I mean, if you don't take the skill, you can't damage anything. You are purely reliant on the HE dot component. It's pretty bad. And hitting the superstructure. Which isn't, you know, super easy because they're floaty shells. So it's just it's just awkward. It's incredibly awkward. And uh, here's a great example of maybe a potential torpedo send. But we'll never know because we can't use narrow. So we would have to go through all of the single launch. Why single launch? Is the only viable? I don't know why Wargaming felt like, oh, you know, narrow spread, just too too strong with British DDs. They're just going to be too strong. Can you see a pattern? It needs inertia fuse high explosive just to play it. Widespread? Really? No one's going to ever use that, Wargaming. So I am ended up being this 5 or 10 torpedo send single launch all the time. You better get used to clicking that button quick because you're wasting opportunity. Having a short range hydro that is borderline useless at mid tier and at late tiers, it definitely gets some more range, but it maxes out at about 3.9 kilometer ship. So I think like 3.1 torpedo. It just, it's just not really good. It's just, meh. It just could be so much better. And making the player have to have hydroacoustic. Because you used to allow the player to choose between hydro and speed boost. You took speed boost away. You took speed boost away from the slowest DD line in the game. So it's a DD line that has great concealment, but they're too slow to actually play the objective. Which is the job of the DD is to play the objective. These are no better than a Soviet destroyer in disguise. A Kobrovsk, a Tashkent. Yeah, it has four or five kilometers better concealment, but it, it is stuck, unable to play the objective the way that every other DD line has been able to. And of course, it's gonna wipe out any DD that it runs up against, maybe not the Kabrosk if the 50 millimeters is presented, but it does insane damage. And if you're gonna be dumb enough to come in one versus one this thing, good luck. You're gonna need it. But that doesn't mean that it's okay, you know, make the guns do a million damage. Oh yeah. It lights a ton of fires. It does a ton of gun damage over range. It needs it desperately needs islands. It sucks on something like Ocean for its gun systems. They're just too floaty. It really needs to sit by an island like a light cruiser and fire on a giant battleship that can't avoid it. Sound very familiar? Yeah, it should. Because Akizuki, Kitakaze, Hiragumu. It must be a floaty shell, can't find an island, because the last three to five patches have all had this same sort of design come in. And you know what? That's fine if you enjoy it, if you love it. I just think that there was an opportunity here to design something that was different, design something that could make use of torpedoes and encourage that. And instead, it's sort of stuck in a play style that is reminiscent of a light cruiser and you know the torpedoes are 
an afterthought. An afterthought? Really? Do we need afterthought again? Soviet cruisers? Hello? You nerfed? You took away the Kovodos? I used to play that ship all the time. I loved it. You took the torpedoes away, and yeah, sure, you can boringly do 150,000 damage. And you can see me racking up the damage here. But it's just... It's not a DD. This isn't what a DD does. Or should do. I wish I could play the objective more aggressively. I wish I could go hunt targets down that are DDs. I can't. I'm basically like a Colorado, a New Mexico. If people come towards me, I can do a good job against them. But if I'm stuck having to chase, I am irrelevant. I'm just a body absorbing the attention of a couple ships that will kill it eventually, but I can't actually dictate the pace of the game. I can't win the game for my team. And if a DD can't win the game for their team, what's the point? That's the whole point. You gave up your damage potential. You gave up so many things as a DD to have that concealment, to be able to not have a Citadel. And I just don't see enough return on that kind of investment when they take away speed boost, when they make these the slowest tier for tier ships at uh, as a DD. Cruisers being able to outrun me. Hydroacoustics, really shallow. Yeah, long duration, great. Requiring me to have inertia fuse high explosive. To just play the ship. We're not talking about like turning it into a light cruiser boss like the Akizuki now. No, no, no. It's back to what the Akizuki had to deal with. I can't even play the ship. And I just don't like that. I think that's poor. I think you should not have two mandatory skills that players take. And since we're in this testing work in progress, I think it should change. Me personally, I think you should do something. Fix the wide to narrow. Obviously, torpedo just obvious, like straight up. If you don't do that, I don't understand where you're coming from. Like, it is such a joke that wide is the the other alternative to single launch. Really? Wide? I can name on one hand the amount of wide spreads that I have sent that have been successful. Usable. Necessary for it to be wide. It's just it's just a waste. It's just a waste. It's a lot. That's a joke. Like it made me chuckle when I looked and every single British DD is stuck with this. This wide plus single launch bull crap. So change that. That's an easy change. You could literally patch it in right now, Wargaming. But it was a conscious decision. They probably felt like, oh, their torpedoes will be too effective. Okay. If they're actively torpedoing, this playstyle can't really do both. It can't actively torpedo and camp behind islands. Who cares? They've got to kind of do one or the other. That's fine with me. I think it's fine with anyone else. Now, look at this game. Look at how this game's turning out. We've got every enemy ship dead except one DD. And I am sailing directly towards B point directly towards B point with the signal flag equipped, mind you. So this speed is actually faster than what it will be if you don't use a signal flag. And I'm still not going to get there fast enough. I, I probably wasted one second by that, that slight juke. I don't perceive any benefit from the British acceleration that exists on the British cruisers, right? It, it just... There's just too much you have to overcome with the current British DD design. Yeah, the DPM's astronomical. It's probably one of the highest DPM's in the game. Yeah, that, that's great. But if it's so clunky 
that in order to perform what you're good at, you have to sacrifice everything else. Well, what's the point as a DD? I don't want to play this as a cruiser that camps behind an island. I don't want to be like, I don't know, a, a Minnow 2.0 just with HE. Like, does is that really what you want? Camp behind an island? Maybe smoke behind the island if people are firing at you? Use hydro, you know? Oh, you can use HE. Yeah, that you know, thinking about that, it, it's just not there. And I would not even have the speed to get over to C-Point to try and pause it. And look how close this is. I know for a fact if I were playing a American or a German, I probably would have won the game or assisted in capturing. I could have used speed boost, got to B, then use it again, go to C, or we wouldn't even be in this position. I had at least three or four games in a 12 game span where it was 100% because I was a very slow DD and I had no speed boost that I couldn't play the objective and win, help win the game for my team. But yeah, it does great damage from range behind an island. Wow, awesome. So incredibly disappointed. I hope that Wargaming tries to change their design a little bit and I've given my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Hope this was helpful. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.